When you're drawing or creating backgrounds, one of the best simple tricks you can use is to employ a floor plan to help you plan your image. This is something you can utilize if you're drawing comics or illustrations to plan out the scenes, to plan buildings, to make sure that when you are illustrating a shot that, you know, the windows and the doors and the houses look the same from, you know, image to image. You can also obviously utilize the same idea when you're doing concept design to make sure that the things you're creating Creating are consistent. This is such a good simple idea and I think the utility of it is probably obvious but there are some simple objections and things that often come up such as when do you start planning and how much detail do you put in and how much do you actually have to think about the things that you're designing. Often it's just as important to make sure that the image reads from a two-dimensional standpoint, that things are in the right spot. So how much do you actually follow the floor plan in the first place? What I want to do in this video is dig into this topic a little bit and show you kind of how I utilize these tools and I'll show you some examples from actual projects I've worked on. Anyway, it should be a fun one. So let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about illustration and picture making, which is a big part of what I'm going to talk about in this video, if you haven't already, you can check out my illustration mini workshop. It's free and it's designed to share with you my journey as an illustrator, as someone going from, you know, someone who look, couldn't draw at all to being a professional artist, making a regular living out of this. It talks about my journey and it shares some simple tips on how to get more detail and polishing your work, how to think about composition, and also how to think about the idea of preparing your work for professional clients and working professionally. Anyway, as I said, it's free. Link will be in the description. Go check it out. So when I first started using this concept of just kind of sketching maps and floor plans of my art, it was really, really useful, but I had to really figure out the details and understand when to use it, when not to use it, and how to use it, sort of how to combine it into the ideation process. I noticed that a lot of really, really talented professional concept artists that I saw work would utilize this idea, and it really helped them to just frame the simple action, and also as a teaching tool, it's a really good way to just get people to understand what they're drawing so much of kind of backgrounds looking really simple or, you know, just kind of lacking life, lacking, you know, that sort of real touch is that we just don't know what to draw. And so much of the floor plan is just separating out that thinking process where you're saying, look, what should I draw um, into a really basic system where obviously everyone can kind of draw a floor plan, right? You're just drawing, you know, stuff from above. This goes here, this goes there, that goes over there. It's really simple, and through doing that, you get to think more about, well, what should be there? Um, how are the rooms designed? Where would the door go? And once that's there, then when you have to draw it, it's a little bit more of, oh, I just have to draw this thing now, which might be a challenge, right? It's no easy thing to just say, hey, draw this floor plan. Although you don't necessarily need to draw it from an architectural point of view, but look, it is a challenge to draw it. But you're able to focus on the drawing challenge. And I think often, especially in the beginning, one of the biggest things that can trip up the aspiring artist is when you're kind of trying to figure out how to draw something well, but you're also not sure whether the thing you're drawing is the right thing. And you're not sure whether it's in the right spot. And so as you draw it, what happens is it doesn't look right, even though it's drawn well. If you're trying to draw a door, um, draw a door, if you're trying to draw a door, and you know you're kind of trying to figure out the perspective and like okay well here's the wall and the drawer's sticking out here so that means the vanishing point is somewhere else and blah 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 and then it's like well oh that doesn't look right and it's like it's maybe not because the perspective is wrong it's because the door is in the wrong place and instinctively we kind of see that and we're like eh, it's not really how you know um, rooms are normally designed just as an example so i think that using floor plans is a really, really fundamental tool for all artists. And it also gives you a little bit of an insight into one of the primary problems, which is 
the unknown unknowns with drawing. Often when you're trying to draw a house or a building or a garden or something really practical, a big part of why it's going to not look good if you don't draw it well is, again, you just don't know what stuff should go there. Oh, like what stuff is on a, is on a house? You have a pathway to the door, for instance. Um, there's often sort of functionality behind why these things are here. And if you have to draw the floor plan, often what happens is you start thinking, I don't actually know what a house is designed. I've never even looked. You know, you walk down the street all day, every day, and, you know, you're seeing all these houses and all these buildings, and you don't actually pay attention to where are the doors placed, how high are the doors, all these little details. And drawing the floor plan allows you to kind of figure out, you know, what you don't know, and to just think about, like, oh, okay, next time I go out into the world, I'll actually pay attention and look. So, as I said, I think this is a really, really fun, important topic, and it's actually pretty simple once you understand the basic do's and don'ts and, you know, things that are really going to trip you up in the beginning. Obviously, once you get a handle on this, you can use it creatively, you know, as you wish. But what I want to do now is jump over to the drawing table, and I'll show you a few examples of this and just demonstrate the very, very basics. All right, here we are at the drawing table. So, firstly, I just want to demonstrate how simple this can be. You can just do what I would sort of describe as a napkin sketch and this is where you're thinking about okay you know even if you're just doing a, a sketch right how how can you put in a little bit of time to plan it now this is where i would typically be using just very very simple bits of paper or a sketchbook or something like that and look you know if you're drawing the floor plan of a house you just sit there and dive in right i can just say okay like here's a door all right, maybe we've got a corridor going down the the back, and maybe we've got a room here. We've got door here, door here, all right? And, you know, this is the, you know, sort of bedroom, bedroom, living room, kitchen, right? That would be a really old-style house, um, you know? And then, you know, a modern one would kind of build something out the back if you were having to design something, you know, like a garden or a castle, then you might think a little bit about the map, right? Think about the territory, like where are these things placed? And again, it doesn't necessarily just have to be this kind of static floor plan. You can think about this in two dimensions. I might think about saying, okay, look, I've got a giant castle thingy with a tower up here and there's walls around right that tower now again you can start from floor plan you can do little sketches the key is that you are planning you're designing and you're thinking about it so i might say hey you know this is often how these um large castles are designed and we need to think about functionality so you kind of just say well you know they're typically sometimes they're built on a hill right and bump and then what happens, right? They put a bunch of houses and things over here, and that kind of becomes full. And then they say, okay, let's build another wall, right? And then let's build another wall, and then let's build another wall. And typically, you know, you're going to think about, well, what, what's going to be nearby? Well, probably they're going to need some sort of water nearby, right? There might be a, a river going through, and you get creative, right? Think about it. So again, you know, this is just the most basic plan. It, it's not really detailed at this point, and and what and you can interplay, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be one thing or the other. You can do it like that, and then you can sort of think about like, well, okay, if I didn't have a castle here, right? And then I kind of have this bit sort of over here, right? I've got my big tower here, I've got some little buildings here. Then think about like, well. Where, where does the road go, right? Like, where's the gate, right? Maybe, again, the gate is kind of out here. You know, you often have a really strongly defended gate. And, you know, maybe there's like a path down here. Now just start thinking. Be creative. And this is where, again, part of the interplay that happens here is you start going, look, I don't know anything about castles. Hey, uh, I'll go look at some books. I'll go look at some YouTube videos and start to think about, look, how were castles designed? And, you know, that's where the visual library concept comes into play. But this is just the napkin sketch. It's just very, very simple. 
and you're just ideating. And it can be, again, as simple as sort of saying, hey, I've got to, oh, let's get a bit of paper. Yeah, I've got to design a little layout for a house. Um, what's going to be where? So if I look at some really, really simple ideas here, right? Um, and this sort of moves on to the second bit, which is where, you know, if you're really trying to think about it in a little bit more detail, here we can see this is kind of what I did for Geppetto's little cottage. And this is exactly what I would sort of start to do if you need to build it up. But you start this by just doing the napkin sketch and saying like, oh, okay, well, what's happening? He, he's kind of got a door here, right? There's two windows here. If we look outside, outside there's going to be some flower pots. And I think there's like a bucket there on the side over here. So again, I'm, I'm kind of viewing it. I should probably flip it up the other way. All right. So we've got a door here going in the door. Uh, on this side, which would be in there, we got a fireplace. And his bed is yeah, kind of in this corner here. And over here, next to the bed, he's got his woodworking table. Got some chairs here. And, you know, if we want to sort of go further, again, we can start to fill in all those little details, right? Where is this? What do we have outside? We have some steps. Bom, bom. And, uh, you know, in this case, it's really just this tiny little room he's got. This one-person cottage workshop and on the side of it we can see there's some wood right a little wood shed wood lean to a few other little bits and pieces and you know that's kind of all i'm really thinking about at the initial thumbnail stage it's just like look what's there like how do i figure that out now the more detail that you need the more you need to really start to think about it and what you can see here is that I sort of probably tried to think about it, but a lot of me doing this is part of the thought process that I have developed in order to make this better. And I would often, you know, find that I'd fall into traps where, look, I get most of it right. You can see here that this panel is, you know, is a nice little floor plan in and of itself. If we look here, this is the same the same building but i've kind of got a few of the details wrong for instance there's no flowers or leaves on this pot plant but on that pot plant there is and if we look at the the chimney this one i think i looked at some reference and i was like oh yeah that kind of looks like how they would make it but i've got some pots hanging off here whereas here there is no pot alas and you know that is the sort of problem you run into is you, you kind of have most of the idea but if it's a space where you really need to draw it from a few different angles then what you'll find is it's so much easier to plan it in detail now there's a number of ways you can do this you can actually sketch it which is similar to what i was showing before you could try and do a mixture of floor plan plus three-dimensional drawing so do something that's very similar to an isometric drawing and this allows you to place different elements now the, the key here with all of this is you, you do as much as you need to and this is a creative exercise there's no right or wrong but this would be a really good way to sort of progress from the floor plan and again you might have a bit of you know sketch paper that you know shows the floor plan and then we would say okay like how how do we right how do we how do we think about these spaces All right so here i've got my right big old chimney that again here right so it has the half there now these can be super sketchy these can be super rough there's no right there's no right or wrong here there's no rules certainly when my perspective drawing was you know not that good i i didn't spend 
you know, I, I spent the same amount of time and, you know, things just looked a lot, a lot rougher, right? And as my perspective drawing will get better, hopefully over time, these will look better and better. But yeah, all we're trying to do, and, and again, with detail, that there's probably a few different stages to this, but with detail, partly what I'm thinking about at this next stage is not sitting there saying like, Look, how, how many bricks are in the are in the chimney, right? So that could be the next level of like crazy detail of detail if you wanted, right? If if I needed, right? If I needed the exact pattern of these bricks to be exactly the same, then you know, sure, right? You know, let's let's draw that out. Um, often you can use reference, right? And the first time you draw it, or you could just do a sketch that's a little bit more detailed. And then you always refer back. But mostly, what I'm trying to remember is. Let's not forget any major elements, All right? So I'm going to have a shelf here, bump, bump, and uh, I think there's a shelf over there, and obviously we have a, a bed here. And I'm just being super rough with this, right? Um, don't take, don't take much of this too seriously. the The goal here is is just to understand a, a little bit, but. This is where we start to think about things like, well, if I was living in this house, and this actually reminds me um, of like a great quote. And I often say this because the first French book that I ever drew was Seven Pirates. And it is actually storyboarded by Jérôme Laculli, who is an amazing, amazing artist. Uh, I should always have a picture of some of his, uh, have some of his books so I can show. Um, but he once said to me on a train when we were doing um, uh, Dedicast tours together, he said, he said, team, to draw the house, you must draw the people in the house. And I was like, Jerome, that is so true. And I was literally, um, I was literally just kind of like, ah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think before that, again, I had a lot of apprehension to this, but so much of the process Again, just sitting there drawing your, your funny little overhead map style things or this is starting to think like and I think that's what happens is once we once we get this initial phase of like, oh, dear Lord, what goes where? How do I how do I put stuff right? And you kind of start to think about like, oh, well, look, how big would the table be? Um, OK, now I've got a bed. Um, like, yeah, maybe there's like a, a pillow here and. Like the things here, look, the doors here. Um, yeah, they've got some sort of windows here that look, yeah, you don't have to draw the windows in. I can just kind of reference where they are. Next, you can start to think, ah, oh, if I was in this house, what would I want? And that's where I kind of say, ah, oh, well, it, it would be nice to have a little, all right, like a little, a little armchair, wouldn't it? That would be fun. That would be, that would be nice, wouldn't it? And then you might think, well, you know, I didn't do this here, but maybe you'd want a little footstool in front of the chair, because that would be nice. And maybe you would like a little side table to put a beverage or something. And then you think, well, okay, what goes on fireplaces? And you'd think, well, again, in this image, if we look at this, I'm sort of thinking, well, he's probably going to do his cooking there. So we need some pots, we need some pans. Maybe he has, uh, again, a little, again, I haven't sort of done this here. I'm just sort of going, I probably would have been better if I thought about this more when I was drawing it, obviously. Um, you know, maybe there's a, a box here um, full of ingredients. Maybe there's a little shelf full of ingredients, right? And over here, what else do you need when you have a fire? Well, I don't know what they are, but because, um, again, I don't have a fire that I use. But you obviously get those sticks so you can, you know, poke the fire and, um, you know, look, they're, they're, they're for kind of moving things around, right? Um, the logs around so that, uh, you know, you can sort of arrange it properly, make sure the airflow is going correctly in the fire. And then you think about like, well, look, most hearths have some kind of, right? Like the, the floorboards are wood, you know, but the actual bit in front often has this, you know, which I kind of haven't drawn. I've got this little bit out there which is also made of brick and stone so that you know when bits of fire and you know burning wood fall over there then you know it doesn't burn the burn the floor again people with the actual fireplaces are like 
oh my god you total noob um but again this is what we deal with you know like I, i've never lived in a in a tiny little uh place like this um i got to sort of think about it and, and look at a little bit of reference and then i go oh, okay well that means if that's the case then look these little fire guard things that i don't know whether they had you know this this seems like a modern safety contrivance but um yeah you know the the gate the fire grate right that needs to go forward a little bit etc 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 and we can think about look where where do his clothes go right he's got to have some place for his clothes let's draw a little dresser here right little set of drawers bump 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 and maybe there's uh you know again i had here like another little table right a little stool or something like that and what you could do then is to go further and say well you know maybe there's like a few pegs on the wall right with like a coat on it again i don't know how high he's meant to be not sure on scale yet again you refine this do a few of these play around with it and then again we can we can go further we can start to think well is the person messy right do they have bits of clothes everywhere do they have right um you know is is the bed made is it is it not made is it is it messy is it clean uh, one of the things I had here was a rug. The rug sort of goes uh, kind of here. Again, it, was, it wasn't probably the best place to rug, but just helped to break things up a little bit. All right, so again, I've got a rug. Here I've got his woodworking table. And then the next thing we do is go further, right? Like what is on, what is on the table? Now you can see again, this is not all to scale. It also probably needs a design pass to be like, okay, what type of bed is this? This is a woodworker. Who is Geppetto, right? And, you know, maybe we could make things look a little bit fancier. You notice in the Disney version, right? Um, and a lot of the other sort of images that I think works really well is, you know, his shop is full of little toys and other sort of trinkets he's made. I think that's like a really good idea as well. But you iterate. So this is, you know, the basic idea. And then what I might sort of do is, again, we could do another call out for this little woodworking corner. Put some cool stuff there, really design it. But I think the first step is really just about functionality and thinking about what is likely to be there and who lives there. What do they need? And it's these questions that start to bring up um, you know, good answers, good design, good things to say again, oh, that's right. He's meant to be someone who works on, you know, toys and he makes things. He makes, um, you know, bits and pieces. Uh, he's messy. He's not messy. He's clean. He's old. He's young. All of, the, all of these things play into it. But just start with a very, very simple floor plan and move on to something that is as detailed as you need for this particular case. For me, this room appears a few times it appears here in detail and it appears here in detail and um you know that's about it we, we've got a few other sort of things here and what you'll even notice is like this this is sort of a little bit different right we we've sort of actually changed and this is a good example of why you need to do these floor plans and think about it a little bit better because in some of these cases i've completely changed the floor plan but, you know, no one probably even noticed. Sometimes, though, you really have to get it right. And you have to get it right on the first go, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. So this is my VizDev sketchbook for Star Atlas Core. It doesn't actually have that much stuff in it. But one of the things that I did early on was some uh, sort of overhead sketch for the main character, Gion's ship, which is a modified Calico Seeker. And I actually modified the overall shape since doing this. So I, I modeled this in 3D and I will show the 3D process for how I combine 3D with this same idea. If you do need to use 3D, um, I actually changed the, the sort of general proportion of it a little bit once I built it in 3D. But this was done before that. And it's just there to give me a rough idea of like, right, okay, I've done some sketches of it. How does the functionality work? How do people actually fit in there? So this is where I kind of have a couple of different sections on here. And again, you know, sometimes this really, you know, plays into 
the um, shots that we'll draw. What I'll do in a minute is take us over to Photoshop and we'll look at the panels from the comic and pages that actually show some of these areas inside the ship. But this just is me thinking about, look, I've drawn this cool ship shape. Um, how do I actually fill it with stuff? And I've sort of thought about the floor plan. So um, what I have done is developed a cabin area up here which is a situation where we have this clear canopy and I have some chairs here. There's one, two, three chairs. I have uh, sort of um, navigation, sort of console screens and um, sort of control panels and stuff like that. We've then got a door and we got a few more separate rooms here and this area here actually got extended so there's probably like a few more sort of separate storage um, and sort of just general sort of rooms in the middle and then back here once we get towards the end we kind of have this crew area and I kind of wanted a circular table I don't really know why maybe again they have kind of a circular table in the Millennium Falcon and I, and I always kind of like that idea um, as an aesthetic because it's uh, you know it's a little bit more organic it, it's less kind of uh, you know just sort of blocks and stuff like that so we'll see I'll show you in a minute how that kind of turned out in the comic but this is kind of what I do and I'm thinking about look how do all these areas work now as part of this I'm thinking about it and part of this process is not just me making up all the detail it's thinking about the structure and the flow so I thought about look where would the crew area be over here we probably have some bunks on the side some sleeping areas either side and then back here we're going to have the engine room so they would probably be uh, here like crew area cabin slash bunk here that would be very compact and here would be a utility room and back here is kind of where they enter the engine room so again characters are pretty small it's it's a uh, given how big the ship is uh, there's not actually much room in it because it's mostly sort of really thin anyway but this is what i do and i'm thinking about okay here's the main engine here are the exhaust ports for the engine i've got extra exhaust ports here so what's happening again this ship transforms right and these wings kind of fold up so i'm sort of thinking about look where are the fulcrum points for that how does that work and you know like the extra engines in here and i'm just thinking about all that stuff Half of these things I will never draw, but I need to understand what's there because if I don't, when I move to the next phase, I will sort of get in trouble. Now, again, as I said, this would be an iterative process. And at some point I really need to go through and sort of model out this whole ship in 3D. I'll show you in the, the next video, which will be about 3D in this sort of background series. Um, I'll show you kind of how I sort of handle some of that. But for me, again, it's an iterative process, but at some point you really have to sit down and figure it out as best you can from an intellectual design perspective and at least have a go at this. But anyway, let's jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you kind of how some of these areas turned out in actual panels. All right, so here we are and I've got all of the finished pages that really were a result of that initial sketch of the spaceship. So I'm really just gonna show these quickly. We've got a top view of the ship that was actually based on a 3D model that I built based on that sketch. The proportions changed a little bit. The reason the proportions change is I had to really figure out what it would look like in three dimensions. So kind of the same same basic shape but it's moved around a little bit and this is the fixed ship and and basically the ship if you see other pages like this one i can get it looking pretty consistent using a very 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 basic 3d model and that allows me to to deal with a lot of those perspective and proportional concerns now the interior of the ship you can see here i've got this circular table happening and I've sort of fleshed it out. Now this is not based on any 3D, this is just drawn. And here I've got the cockpit area as well, which again is also just something that's drawn. It's just drawn by hand, the perspective's all done by hand. I probably should at this stage build a much better either floor plan or 3D model of the entire ship to really make sure that all of these things stay consistent. Because as you've seen in some previous comic examples, a lot of it is doesn't need to be quite that detailed. So you have to really consider at what point you need 
to go to that extra level. So if I go into Photoshop, um, we can kind of look at some of these things a little bit closer up. Here we can see we've got that same shot there. And yeah, it's just a matter of sort of adding detail to that basic idea. Now, the, the process here is iterative, as I've kind of alluded to, and it really is a matter of thinking about, okay, what do I need to move to the next stage? What do I need to conceptually think about framing the shot? So even though this was just drawn, I needed to draw the floor plan first in order to just think about, okay, what is that establishing shot? How do I frame the action? How do I understand where this is in the ship? And a lot of it is just for my own relaxation. So as I've been saying that often if you're trying to draw something like this, then it can be very tricky to just focus on the task of drawing and it can be easy to get sidetracked and you know mixed up between oh, look what am i drawing does this look good is everything in the right spot so thinking about this drawing the floor plan allows me to then first draw this establishing shot really zoom out and understand like okay no this is going to work i'm going to be able to draw this again i understand where this is in the ship what you know what's going to happen and then to you know subsequently draw some of these other angles and have a look you know pretty good idea that it's going to line up now as i keep saying with a lot of these comic book pages we don't need to have 100 percent consistency or at least i don't believe that's the case and i think if we look at a lot of backgrounds you'll see things aren't always consistent we're building up a general framework of where things are, but I obviously don't want to do silly things like place the characters in different spots and have it so that on one side, this character, you know, in, in one panel, it feels like this character is in a different position to this character, let's say. That's the kind of level of consistency that I'm gonna get by just doing that initial sketch. To go to the next level, it's probably gonna be important to draw a really, really detailed floor plan, or as I keep saying, build it in 3D to make that really easy. Now, you don't necessarily need to build it in 3D, 3D. You could build a physical 3D model. That's what a lot of people did before to make sure that they drew things consistently. Um, and I think that's been a tradition throughout the ages of artists building 3D models uh, physically and digitally. So again, it doesn't have to be all you know, new school, but you know, look, this is the basic idea. So if we uh, look at a few of those other shots, again, here we can see the ship uh, based on that floor plan looks fairly consistent. Here I've got the cockpit. Again, just the basic idea that we've got three seats We've got panels, screens in front. These things just frame the general idea. And in my head, I have kind of a vision for what that cockpit will look like. And again, it's based off that floor plan. I know that sort of general design is going to work. Just show you a few other pages here. You can see this is, for instance, a picture of the ship that was drawn before there was any layout any 3d model or anything so this is me just kind of drawing stuff and you can see the rotated wings and yeah you know so you can iterate right as i keep saying start with this it's just a matter of understanding as you progress forward at what point do i really need to figure out what's going on all right so before we kind of end up this little video what i want to do is illustrate one of the main points that i kind of want to end on which is that you need to keep in mind this is a tool. So if we go back to the concept of drawing a floor plan or a map for where there might be a castle, we could say that, look, here is a castle, right? It kind of has a wall around it. And maybe here's the giant entrance to the castle. So we've got a castle here and we might have our little fantasy barracks, um, some stables, whatever you want. Again, I'm not doing a particularly good job of figuring out where things are. But we, we are considering the options. And then you might have a, right, some other buildings here. And we would think about, like, where are, where are all the roads? And then you might draw buildings in there, etc., etc. And then you might think, look, where does this road go? Why does it move there, right? How much space around 
a castle do they normally chop down all the trees what's there likely to be around here what's there likely to be over here now we can think about these things and potentially we could imagine again often it's easier to view these things from a three-dimensional sketch so I could imagine again let's get a proper that's a not as dark a pencil right let's get this one so again you know you could imagine any kind of three-dimensional version of this where again you know we have some kind of interesting pathway right castle up here again I'm just being super sketchy with it castle here right there's a big entrance here it's the only way you can get through right big wall right other towers over here and maybe again in here there's like some big castle -y thing right whatever again play around with it have fun just for illustrative purposes and again as I as I sort of said we might have another wall here right with another right keep I can imagine I got some tiny little people down there just trying to be loose trying to think about what works so we've got these plans and you know you'd have lots of buildings and things all right some gardens other palaces etc and again maybe you'd do another one now the thing is we've got a plan right the idea here is we have a floor plan we've got a good sense of where all of these different bits are going and that's good the trick is that when we when we go to take a shot of this how do we use this idea because i think that really is the crux because as i've said in previous parts of this series in backgrounds very early on and the reason i put them early on is that i think it's important to understand that simplicity and clarity in the visual narrative is key so when we come to draw an actual frame which is what people care about then we need to consider what is important about this frame so here I might have the idea that oh look I've got my nice uh, and again I'm gonna sort of run <laughs> right we'll pretend this doesn't exist but yeah you might have this main road right this is like your King's Road or something and it's going to start going through some forest or some of the wild area right as it sort of gets out over here right maybe maybe the maybe the city kind of goes back there right maybe there's like millions of uh or you know thousands of other structures and things there in the back and here we have right this bit here again most of this is just thinking the drawing doesn't matter that much and we've got this road and I've got a variety of trees and stuff. Now, the question is, uh, who cares, right? The, the viewer of your illustration doesn't care how much of a Mac maker you are. They don't care how good you are at understanding these things. They care that you're able to inject authenticity into a cool picture. So when we come to draw this, you have to understand that to a certain degree, this is a plan and you utilize the best bits of a floor plan of a design when you come to do illustration so if we think about like look what's going to make a good illustration we might say well what's the story right again the story is we have a, a character here and they've got their strange rider creature right which is normally what Right, what I'm doing, have someone, right, one of these creatures that I've sort of drawn a million times, some sort of riding land dragon, and they're heading towards this castle. So, conceptually, the reason that this will help your backgrounds is to understand, like, ah, oh, you know, this is where they're entering, and that means I'm going to have some trees over here, right? I might have some, you know, trees over here, or maybe there's just a, a pathway here maybe there's not so many trees here why because I want to see this I want to see the things that matter 
And then what do I want to see? I want to see this thing, right? I want to see that here. So I'm going to show that. But you'll notice that the things that I'm moving and letting flow are to do with composition. So I'm I'm sort of saying, hey, let's look here, right? We've got some characters here, right? Got some flags, whatever. Again, probably, you know, if, if you want to make this cool, maybe do some actual design work. I'm not really doing design work. I'm just being generic. Now behind it, I might say, okay, this, the rest of this thing is on a hill and get rid of that and then what do I go oh I've kind of got this windy road right up the back Boom. and then over here I've got this big big wall right, I've got the secondary thing here and I've got the castle over here Right, some other bits and pieces there. And, you know, that's really what I'm kind of after, is this level of understanding. And you might do a bunch of these little sketches to understand and, and try and conceptualize, like, what what is what is the best way to, to frame this action? How do I how do I tell this story? But here very much what I'm doing is is getting a few key things, which is I've got a I've got a road here. People are going along the road. I've got trees either side of the road. Right. And then I've got this thing, which is a gate. And again, if you put some extra design, right, maybe we put some big sort of circles on either side, right, then we'd always recognize it. Boom. Oh, that's this gate in our story. And then what's behind? Well, it's the, the magic castle. And the magic castle has this big keep thingy, right? This big drawbridge. It's not a drawbridge. Again, I don't know much about castles, actually. I should probably know way more, considering how much I aspire to draw fantasy comics. And it's got this giant, amazing castle tower on top. Now, the tower is bigger than this. This is bigger than this. Right, got this other sort of thing here, which is maybe a secondary tower, which could be used to, again, you know, people, I'm imagining those little guys up here, right, and they're shooting arrows down on anyone who tries to, to come along here to, to fight. Again, that's why a lot of these things are designed. Um, but it gives me that basic structure, right? Now, imagine I am doing a different thing. So imagine over here, imagine this is a river. Imagine this whole thing is on the side of a river or something. Right. So imagine there's like boats, right, sailing down the river. Now, if we're on a boat over here, I'm going to see something different. And this really is the key to this whole thing. This is how it helps you. It's not going to help you with perspective or anything like that. It's just going to help you not freak out. So if I say, where, where's another shot? Here's another shot. All right, bump, bump. And this time I am a young Leonardo DiCaprio-esque sailor. All right, and I'm hanging on to, all right, this is a terrible, this is becoming a terrible stick figure drawing. Oh no, you're a real artist, Tim. You're meant to be better than this. All right, stick figure guy, right? That's why, again, concept art, people always do little stick figure man because uh, it's iconographic and it doesn't doesn't look bad. All right, so we've got our characters here, right? Another few characters here, and they're all looking. What are they looking at? They're coming from here and they're looking up. So we see that we've got a river curving around and what do we see we see this giant mass of like the town right remember i said over here we got all these buildings all right so i got that going down there and we're obviously going to have some you know places some docks there right 
and then what do we get we get over here we've got this hill so up here right behind this we're going to have the hill of this castle oh. Right, so a million little, maybe there's a, again, hopefully there's a wall here to protect people from pirates and things. Right, but here, imagining, you've got towers. Right, a million little buildings. What's behind them? The big keep. But this time we're seeing it from the other angle. The keep is on this side. Right, I've got the big old tower. Right, I got this one is on the other side. And again, would they be that big? I don't know. Again, what well, looks cool, but you know, I'm looking at it from this angle, and what do we see as we as we sneak down here? Right, we see this other big gate. Well, and again, oh, it's got big big circles on it. We imagine they're spheres or something. And again, you know, we could we could make this more iconic, right? We could, right? We could make this be even more iconic. Right? Don't don't. So hopefully that makes sense, right? Th this to me is is the utility of this entire concept and idea, right? And in the back, we're going to have some some trees. And and if we were looking at this guy, right? Like this character is. Right, kind of walking along here, going in. Um, so again, very, very basic shot blocking and planning and just thinking like, what am I going to see? But the whole point I'm drawing this thing, this is this little sketch demo has gone on for a little while, which I do apologize for. Hopefully it's interesting. Um, it, it's really just to underline one point that when you're thinking about exactly where to place things in your compositions, you do so based on what looks good here. I'm iconically placing castles in the background because that's kind of what we iconically understand as these big cities. And I'm, you know, just planning very roughly, okay? These things are normally near rivers. Uh, they normally have these big walls to stop people getting in. Castles are normally built on a hill, on high ground. They're normally built in progressive sessions because this was probably a hill that was, you know, if this was in our medieval land, this kind of hill would be something that probably had a hill fort on it for, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And eventually it got built into a big stone castle. And again, you know, then they protected the stuff that grew around it, etc., etc. You might have a completely different logic if this is a science fiction world, this is a fantasy world with different logic but that's the basic idea and this is interesting but it's only useful in so far as we grab these concepts and just use them to frame the action nicely and we always want to focus on one thing which is the story in the panel and how we tell the story and make that interesting and that's where again you have to be subtle with this there's no right or wrong there's no you know do this or don't do this you can make this as detailed as you want as long as you remember, no one cares. They're only really going to care about this. All right, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how maybe you can use floor plans, maps, drawings, just some situation where you figure out intellectually on a design level, on a functional level, where things are in relation to other things. Now, there's a couple of points here that I think are really important to make before we go. The first is that it's important to view this as a discovery process. It's not necessarily like a linear design process. Okay, we're doing this here. Um, you know, and again, you can see with the spaceship, you see with a lot of the stuff I'm doing, like, you know, in many cases, look, it's a little bit amateurish. I'm a little bit embarrassed that I drew that Pinocchio book and I'm looking through it now and I'm like, oh man, none of this matches up, right? Again, I was trying to focus at the time, I think, on the things that I felt were really important, which was, you know, let's sell the idea within the panel. Let's try and make it feel right. And I think maybe I succeeded at that. Look, it wasn't as consistent as, you know, maybe I would hope it to be. And I always strive to make these things more and more consistent. But again, all of these projects and, and things are kind of done in a little bit of a run and gun style. So while there's an idealized process to, you know, make things really sort of organized, 
it's important to view this as something that can iterate and you can get better at. You can start a drawing, you can get halfway through it, and then you can go, wait, I have no idea what's going on. Let's draw a little floor plan. You can do a rough floor plan, then you can start drawing. And as you draw, then you can be like, let's actually refine this because I don't have enough information here. You can do multiple versions of these design drawings, which is something that I often do. And that's the same for character designs and a lot of these concepts, right? It's an iterative process. This all comes down to one thing, which is how much do you understand about what's going on? And it can be artistic, it can be exploratory, and it can be a thing where maybe you just start sketching these kind of overhead shots, floor plans, maps. I've often heard maps being a really good thing to inspire creativity because you start to think about the world you're inhabiting and you have to think about it on a functional design level, which is a really um, interesting way to view it and, and counterposes very much that idea of like, let's make a cool picture. But Again, remember, the only thing anyone ever cares about is the cool picture. Lastly, what I'd say is just to underline that point that a little will go a long way. You don't need to invest a huge amount of time in this. Just a little bit of planning will really, really help your images to come alive. I'd almost go as far to say that a good rule of thumb here is to do the least amount of planning possible. This is something that's helped me not get stuck in the design planning paralysis stage. It's just, you know, important as a good metaphor, right? Let's think about if you have 20 hours or five hours or whatever the time is to complete an image, you really have to think about what is the best way to spend that time. What are the things that are really going to define quality within that image? What, uh, what is going to matter? You know, and a good way to frame this, you know, further is if you think about someone is paying you to create an image, which again may resonate or may not resonate, but this is how I think about it as a way to rationalize the concept. Someone's paying you, um, you know, thousands of dollars to create a cover image. And, you know, you kind of spend a whole bunch of that time planning all of these things and kind of make, well, you know, look, you know, if we ever needed to do this castle again, uh, look, you know, I've got it fully figured out and I know all this kind of stuff. And then maybe you just don't get around to fully polishing the image or the composition's not quite enticing enough or you haven't really figured out the color scheme. You've got to understand that they don't care. No one cares, again, whether you have it all figured out. They're only looking at the image that probably people are probably looking at it for a very small amount of time and whatever's there, they're going to accept. And if things look cool and interesting, as I've sort of shown in some previous parts of this series, if you look at some Frazetta images or people who are very iconic, you know, you look at these backgrounds, and it's like these things don't make sense. They probably would never fit on a floor plan. So you have to find your sort of balance here, as I say, right? Really, really simple point, but hopefully just, you know, understanding this concept will really help you to use it to the best of your ability. So yeah, I think if you focus on saying, look, what's the least amount I can do here to provide a really good result, that's always gonna focus your mind on thinking about what is important in the image. How, what's the least amount of time I can plan a room and really figure out what's there? What's the least amount of time I can spend planning this spaceship and still have it work really well, look really good? Now that may, may mean that you need to build a full scale model of it, um, you know, in real life uh, so you can look at it and think about it. It may mean you just need a little napkin sketch. Again, that is so much of the trick to all of this is figuring out what type of artist you are, what values you have, what do you care about, and what are other people going to value about your work. Anyway, I think that's all we got time for on this one. Hopefully this, uh, you know, part of the series was interesting. Again, up next, I'm going to do some 3D focused um, sort of parts and really dig into some of the stuff I kind of touched on in this one. So hopefully you'll join me for that one as well. Um, but other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.